Welcome to Arduino Made Easy. In this lesson, we're going to talk about photoresistors or ambient light sensors, whichever you want to call it. So let's get started with this right now. I'm Tom Kovichak, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. I created this channel to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And you may want automation or lighting in your model railroad, and that's why I'm doing these Arduino Made Easy er videos. I'm making it a little bit easier for you to understand if you have no experience with coding or electronics. Now we're going to talk about some photoresistors and I have several different types of them and I'll show you right here. I ha These are the first ones I use but since they're so old one of them has a resistance that's a lot different than this one here so what I did was I purchased some more. I got a pack of 20 of them what I have right here are some old photo resistors from Radio Shack that I purchased some time ago. And what I did is I put some shrink tubing around it so it wouldn't pick up the light on around the photo resistor. And they actually look like this right here. They came in a pack of five. And that's when Radio Shack still had their brick and mortar stores. That was some time ago. Now, you can. If you have a starter kit, you may have an ambient light sensor that looks like this. You can see that it has the squiggly thing up on top, but it's mounted on the board and there's also a resistor mounted on it, okay? Now on this one here, we have to put a resistor on the breadboard, but if you have one that is like this right here, on a breakout board that you get received in a kit, you won't need to add the resistor because the resistor is already on there. We're going to talk about the ambient light sensors and how to see what the reading is on the serial monitor, just like we did with the potentiometer. Now I'm going to show you, I'll plug this in right here. And this is what we're eventually going to get to. Today we're not going to use the LEDs or the resistors for the LEDs. We're just going to use the ambient light sensor, actually two of them. And we're going to simulate a railroad crossing. And this, each one of these ambient sensors is on either side of that crossing to trigger it. And so when you when your locomotive comes over on one side, your train goes over on one side, it starts the flashers, and then when you get over onto the other side, it'll keep it going. Nope, you can't see it if I do it that way. Well, th this will start the flasher on this side, and then as you come across on the other side of the crossing, your flasher will stay on until you leave, and then it'll finally go off. But we're not going to talk about the LEDs on this one. We're just going to talk about the ambient light sensors and how to determine what value you need to trip your lights. Or if you're going to use it for anything else to actuate whatever you want to actuate. If you have something like this, this is an infrared sensor an IR sensor. Now these come in in beginner kits also, but we're not going to talk about that. And we may talk about that this type here in a later episode where we'll show this. We could use these instead of the ambient light sensors to do the same thing as triggering your crossing signal. But anyway, we'll get into this one here a little bit later in another lesson. These ambient light sensors can be referred to by several different names. They could be called photocells, they could be called CDS cells, photoresistors, light dependent resistors, ambient light sensors. So you could see that, you know, they could be called a lot of different things, but basically they all do the same thing. They change resistance depending on the amount of light that is on there. So we're going to start by 
using these two new ones that I got. I'm going to remove these two LEDs just so you won't get confused with those right there. And I'm going to remove these old uh, ambient light sensors that I had on there. I'll take these wires off here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to use a0 and a, A0, this one here, and A2. And those are our analog pins that we're going to use to read the ambient light sensors. And what we're doing with these ambient light sensors is we're actually making a voltage divider. Now, I showed you one of those if you saw one of my older videos about uh, voltage dividers. I did a little discussion on voltage dividers so you could see how they work, but this is basically the same thing. We're just taking the two leads and we're reading in between this 10K ohm resistor here and the ambient light sensor. So one side of this ambient light sensor goes to 5 volts. Here's where it goes to our this one goes to our A0 pin, and this 10K ohm resistor is on the same line as the ambient light sensor and our pin that reads it. And the other side of the 10K ohm resistor, our wire's in the way right there. The other side of the 10K ohm resistor goes to ground. So actually we're reading between this 5 volt and ground and using this 10k ohm resistor and the ambient light sensor as a voltage divider. Now the 10k resistor won't change but as we cover the ambient light sensor the resistance in that will change. So we'll come over to this other one and put them in the pins and once we do that will be good to go. So you can see one side goes to the 5 volts. The other one goes to our analog read pin, which this one is A2. The resistor also goes on that same leg, and the other side of the resistor goes to ground. First thing we're going to do is declare our pins and the readings that we want to get off of those pins. So we'll start off with integer and we'll call the first one east pin. And that is a zero. The second one integer west pin. And that will be on, oops. A2, I gotta put this on, didn't move fast enough. Okay, then we want our reading, so we'll call it East Reading and West, or E A D I N G. Let me do that up here, make this a capital R right here, so. All right, so th those are the four values that we need to declare right off the bat. And so we'll come down to here. What we want to do is start the serial monitor by serial begin. Okay, then we have to come down. We'll come down to here in the loop and what we'll do is take those east reading oops I forgot to put the integer in that int up there there we go now we'll come down to here and we'll do east reading equal analog read and EASTPIN and that's the value that we're going to get off of the pin from the um, 
ambient light sensor. And we'll do west reading and also do equal oops, analog read west pin Now while I was typing and talking away, I didn't realize that everything that I was typing was off screen, so we're going to have to do this again. We want to print out what the reading is, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to say east reading a space on a dam and when a dam and then actually put the east reading do it like that and the same thing for the west reading but what we'll do we'll cheat a little bit here and we'll copy this and then paste it there and we'll just go west and west and then we'll put in a slight delay so we could read it We'll put in a half a second. Okay. Now, uh, while I was doing this before, I ran into an issue where it wouldn't compile and it wouldn't upload to the Uno. And let me move this up a little bit here. And I'll show you. This is okay right now, but what I did was when I was having an issue, for some reason it couldn't find a file, and I don't know why it, it couldn't find it, because the folder wasn't there, but I printed out what the error message was, and I'll show you how you can get these error messages to find out what the problem is. Now you can see down here on the bottom, it says, file does not exist. So it was looking for this file right here. And when I went back to find that file, the, the file was there in a folder that was, wasn't zipped yet, unzipped yet. So I had to unzip it before it would start working. But why it wasn't unzipped and it's been working all this time, I have no idea. But uh, Maybe it's something that they updated because uh, they had a new version. You know, every once in a while you'll see down at the bottom here that there is a, some, some uh, updates available and you could click on. Well, I did that and that might have been what the issue was on there. So let me put this down here like this. But anyway, I'm going to show you how you can get that. You have to go to Preferences. And you'll see right here, show verbose output during compilation and upload. Well, what I did was I, I checked on compilation. And it will put all that stuff down there. So let me compile it now. You can see how all that information is up there. Now I'll compile it again. And you'll see it has less information on the bottom. Okay bring this up here and oh, I got here we go not showing the bottom of the thing anymore but anyway that's it it just shows those two lines normally but when it when you have the uh, those boxes checked off it shows a lot of different lines on there so anyway here's this let me pull this back down so we could see that we have all that ready. Let me plug in the Uno and we'll pull up the serial monitor. 
and as you can see it has east reading equal 557 west reading let me stop this west reading 533 now there's a little little difference between the two sensors right there that's not a lot of difference that's that's acceptable right there but what i'm going to do is put my finger over top of one of the sensors and you can see how the reading went down to under 100 and i'll do the west one and i cover it the same way but it only goes down to about 108 109 107 somewhere in that area and what i did is okay let me show you here i had to turn off the lights to get this to work so let me turn these lights back on there we go now now you can see but the only problem with that with these bright lights on in here you'll see a difference in the reading i'll pull this back up here and you could see it's all both of them are back up into the 800s so and when i cover this one here it goes down to about 421 okay this one over here about 360. and what i did with these i i covered these up with the shrink wrap like i did the heat shrink uh tubing like I did on these other ones right here. I don't know if you can see it right there, but here's the Radio Shack sensor, and I have the the uh, heat shrink tubing over top of it, so it doesn't, so the light doesn't leak through the side. And I did the same thing for the other one. You could also paint them, but uh, since this is really bright lights up here, the the readings are going to be way off from what you're going to have on your layout. So once if you're going to use this method on your layout you could do an initial reading on on your uh, bench just like we're doing here to see where it is and we'll go a little bit further with this and I'll show you how to how to uh, operate the LEDs uh, with this but once you get once you get your sketch written up and everything and you get it satisfactory then you mount your sensors in between your ties in between the track and check it out and you know cover it up like with you know like with the uh, train going over top of it and you'll be able to get a better reading of how it's going to work on your layout is you're going to have different figures on than what you have right here so once you get your sketch built and everything then you put your sensors down in place and then you put different figures in to tar to uh, work your leds and we'll get into how we do that here in a minute i'm going to skip a line here i want to get before that one bring it down a couple lines okay now we're going to put in an if statement and we're going to say if EAST or EADING is less than and we'll say 500 on here And then we'll put more brace in there and put another brace and then move this one down and we're not going to operate any leds right off the bat we're going to put a s e r i a l p oops serial T. We're going to say trigger LED just to show that this is what's going to happen. So we'll compile that. All right, then we'll upload it to the uh, board. All right, and we'll see if we could bring that up. Oh, 
I'm going to bring up the monitor here. Okay, so we're up in the 800s. We'll see if that... Okay, see, so it said trigger LED reading 415. Okay, and it's back up to 860, uh, 860s. So that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to see what that is, and the reading's 366, so we could even bring it down a little bit more. Let me just, I had it completely covered, so let me put it about right there. So that's not quite, okay, so maybe we could go to, we'll put a reading of 450 in there. Oh, it's at 500, okay, so let's try the four, let's see. It's still reading 559. Let's bring it down to 600 just to be on the safe side. We'll go here. And we'll compile that and bring the monitor up. Okay, so we got it right there. So it's hard it's hard to do with all these lights that I have here for recording. So if I turn these lights off and you're gonna see me in darkness right here. And maybe this will. Okay, so right there, the ambient light is at 493. So let me change that and bring this down to, say, uh, 300. And we'll compile that. And then open this up. And then see there it goes. It goes once it gets under th the threshold of minus un less than three hundred, it will give me the reading trigger LED. Okay, so let me change this. Put a space here. I'll put print line. There we go. We'll do it that way so it's not on the same line. Bring us back up. Okay, there we have our readings. Okay, so you see it says trigger LED. Let me turn the auto scroll off and you could see it a little bit better. So it brought it down. I had it completely covered, so it brought it down to almost 100. But as you you could see, as I was covering it up, it was it was changing the reading on there. Let's slow this down so we can read this a little bit more. Okay, we'll do one and a half seconds delay between the readings so we could see it a little bit better as we're doing this. Okay, so. I'm bringing my finger down. So you see once it got below the 300 it said trigger LED and I'll cover it like this here. And we'll bring it back up and then it's back to normal and then we'll cover it again. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing with the other one. Okay, so you see the other one, the, the west reading goes down, but what we'll do there is we'll, let me bring this up, we'll write in, and I'm going to show you something different than what we did last week. We'll do a else if, and, and I'll explain it here. And we'll do less than 300 on that also. And I should put that inside. I should bring this curly bracket up. I'll delete this one right here. And I'll bring this one right here. 
and that way this in this if statement serial print and then this else if statement is in its own braces so we'll do a print on this one and we'll see say G -R -I -D -G -E, trigger other L E D okay and let me put a print line in there okay so now we have an if statement in there and if east reading is less than 300 it will print out trigger led and then else if and what that means is if it sees west reading under 300 it'll print out trigger other led on the serial monitor we'll pull up the monitor here and you can see we got west reading and east reading. I'll cover up the the east one. And it'll say trigger LED. I'll cover up the west one. And it'll say trigger LED and trigger other LED. So I'll take it off of the one. And it just says trigger other LED. And I'm off of it. Off both of them. And we're back to normal. Now that we know how to get the data from the ambient light sensor on the serial monitor, we could figure out what is the right setting that we can trigger the LEDs. Now we're going to do that in the next episode next Saturday on May the 12th. I'm going to show you the sketch with all the notes in it and I'm also going to show you the Fitzing diagram right here. As always you could find a copy of both of these on tomstrainsandthings.com slash Arduino and the Fritzing diagram I put the sensors apart from each other because we're going to use the same diagram in the next lesson where we're going to have the LEDs right in the center. If you would like to see more videos like this on Tom's Trains and Things, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, ding that bell, and that'll notify you whenever I have more videos coming out. And speaking of videos, go ahead and check my playlist where you could see a number of videos categorized for you to find easily. So check them out on the playlist page. Now on next week, we'll work with the LEDs and we'll work on how to get those LEDs working like I showed you in the beginning of the sketch to get them to alternate whenever we cover up the light sensors. We're going to take some of the code from Jeff Bunza's gate crossing sketch that he did oh, about three or four years ago and we're going to modify it a little bit so we could work it on this sketch right here. So your figures on here may be different than mine depending on how much light that you have, how much ambient light that you have, what your sensors, because not all sensors are made the same. They, not all of them have the same exact resistance than the next one. So your readings may be different. So play around with the figures in there and I'll show you in the next one how to get everything working so we could get a working gate crossing, at least with the lights. As far as the bells go, that's a more expensive endeavor. We have to buy more stuff for that. So that's going to be way later on. But at least you get the knowledge right now of how to get started with it so you could build on that knowledge. And we'll keep on going after the next one. We'll keep on doing more sketches on different things for our model railroad. So we'll see you.